Welcome back, YouTube. Uh, I wanted to discuss today the cycle at length here because um, I believe it's very important just to kind of re relay that information as to what time frames that people are expecting, like movements, and now that we're past the, uh, the having period for for Bitcoin. I think that's very important to kind of consider that is the it's not that Bitcoin like has yesterday and now everything's taking off today it's that gradual uh, increase and historically we have um, around a 18 month from the ascend to peak to the flattening right 18 months right and uh, obviously based off of history we know when the the typical run is, is happening and before i get into the video um, i had a, a a very important question pop up on x yesterday um as a matter of fact i'm going to see if i can pull this up because I think it's an important topic and I, I know that this can kind of trickle over and discourage people if you're not um, if, you, if you don't understand as far as for like the, the the divergence between Bitcoin and and Doge I'm gonna switch over here okay so let me and then I'll just come back to the charts. Sorry, this is, I just had this thought while after I hit record. So this is a little improv here. Um, okay. So this is my X page. So if you haven't yet, yeah, please follow me, uh, JR at, at JR David Mitchell. Um, but I, I made this post and I was saying that, you know, 15 cent holding Doge during the bull run, like, and, I, and of course I have a, um, an animation here of Goku. I'm powering up just just kind of relaying the uh the, the the strength of the 15 as it's kind of been holding uh doge throughout the turbulence of this of this market here even when we go below it it bounces back up but uh david here had a point here and i and i wanted to address this uh for everyone because i think a lot of people might may feel this way so he said when btc was 67k two weeks ago doge was above 17. it's struggling to stay above 15 is not a good sign I said it's not good to compare Doge to BTC in terms of price action when Doge doesn't budge. It historically not supposed to be doing anything right now. The fact that we are over 100% from the bottom should be considered a blessing. So um, let me explain that. Uh, so right now, if you go back and you look at 2020 and 2016, Doge historically should still be six cent right now. So the fact that we had a lot of these coins run early, the fact that even Bitcoin set an all time high prior to the halving, I think that's foreshadowing the strength of this movement and the volatility that we're going to have going forward. I think that where we end up um, as, a, as, a, as a market as a whole, uh, I think it's going to shock a lot of people. I do believe that we're going to have uh, ultimately probably around a $10 trillion uh, market cap by uh, peak by the end of a uh, bull run, like I'll say peak bull run, right? Um, and, and really, I think that when you are comparing it now and you see Bitcoin doing these things, so, okay, well, Doge needs to go, Doge needs to go because there's some relevancy um, with Doge and, and Bitcoin. And if you take a look at the charts here, what I mean by divergence, um, well, let me read the next comment because, and he said, when BTC goes down 3% and Doge goes down 10%, and then when BTC goes up 3%, Doge just goes up 3%. Yes, it's good to compare it. When Doge moves down with BTC and doesn't move up. And so here's my response to that. I said, BTC had an individual catalyst. No. Uh, so which is the, the having people want to take positions, uh, portfolio changes, uh, adjustments and stuff like that. But portfolios will adjust to pour money into it. Match the charts and you won't see a divergence. You can do this on coin market cap. I gave examples in my last few videos. BTC has always been able to affect the market negatively because it's the preferred asset. However, if Doge received the individual catalyst like X payments, BTC wouldn't skyrocket because it's not directly related. Hope this makes sense. Perhaps I'll do a spaces this week and we can talk about it. So what that means is Bitcoin is running now and it's getting a lot of capital because of the having this is Bitcoin is going to be the market leader. It's fundamentally geared to suck up most of the liquidity in the market. That's where institutions want to be. When I say percentages, allocations, uh, so what, what happens is you'll see at certain times in the market, whether that be uh, whale selling, uh, macro events, you'll see adjustments. Um, companies, uh, portfolios, institutions, whales, whatever, they have certain percentages that they've allocated uh, specifically to the top 10 because that's where you're going to see the strongest 
uh, overlap when it comes to charting. We're going to take a look at that in a moment so I can prove that. But um, you'll see that the charts match up. Right. So there's not a divergence, but you're going to see the percentages be different that they go into the coins, even though it's affecting the coins in a similar way. Um, what, what that means is if you say, OK, my portfolio is going to be uh, 60 percent Dogecoin, I mean, excuse me, 60 percent Bitcoin, 10 uh, percent Ethereum, 10 percent Doge, 10 percent Cardano, 10 percent uh, sheep. Right. And when you have those allocations now, obviously your portfolio is more heavily weighted toward Bitcoin. And that's because that's your preferred asset. But if an opportunity comes up, we have a whale dip, a macro event, there's a major sell off. You're going to adjust those portfolios. So you'll see a, a sell off in some of the other coins and, and you'll see the percentage where everything drops because they will typically do that so they can get a better deal. And then Bitcoin will rise, but the other coins won't rise with that same percentage level, even though they're charting the same pattern. So we call that typically like a swap and they're adjusting their positions, selling off some of the other ones and increasing their preferred asset hole, which is uh, Bitcoin. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on the chart when I say divergence. Sorry for all the jumping around because this was not what I had planned for this video, but. You know, that's why we're here, right? This kind of came to me. Um, so we are when we talk about divergence and making sure that we're trending certain things. So uh, divergence would be the chart doing something different, right? So if they're doing the allocation throughout the top 10, what we're looking for are similar patterns, right? So right here on the right side of the screen, we're looking to say, hey, is this is there a divergence here? There is not. It's charting the same. Bitcoin is charting the same as Ethereum. We see very similar patterns. We see it with Solana. We see it with BNB. Right. Um, we're going to ignore the stable coins, obviously, but we, you see it with XRP. Right. You see we have the dip here. It's matching up. You see a, even Doge here. And see, people don't complain about when Doge does when Doge uh, actually has a divergence and it's beneficial because you'll see that the pattern is very similar. We have the dip down here and then we had a stronger uptick than XRP, a stronger uptick than BNB. Um, a stronger uptick than Ethereum, right? Even the candle, like the candle, we had a divergence there, but because it was positive, nobody cares. It's like, oh, okay, it's good. It's like it only, it's only bad divergence when it um, it goes down. But overall, you'll see that the coin typically, as long as they're trending up, and you see a very similar pattern. You'll see it even here in Cardano. You'll see something in Sheep. Sheep had a stronger divergence to the upside, like Doge. Uh, but it still had the dip. It's still matching up very similar patterns here. This means that the institutions are still allocating money into those assets. Retail isn't um, as a coincidence doing the same thing that institutions are. They are adjusting their portfolios and they're, they're carrying a lot of these coins here. So um, that is a, a, a healthy indicator for me saying that, hey, they still believe that these coins are the institutions. Want, their, their one job is to make money. Right. That is the sole purpose of a hedge fund, of a, um, a, a fund allocation, whether that be for ETFs, futures, um, uh, open uh, options, all that kind of good stuff. Their, their sole fundamental purpose of being in these coins is to make money. So when you see that these coins are training together and have uh, that camaraderie, it means that they believe there's upside to that. And you can find evidence of that even. Sorry about all the jumping around, but... Um, I just want to kind of prove what I'm saying here. You can find evidence of that in longs versus shorts. You see it here, five minute, 72% long, 27%, 30 minutes, 72% long, one hour, 71% long, 28% short, four hours, 72, and uh, one day, 72, 27, right? So it, it's not like there's no indicator, whether that be the live action and the candles, the uh, action behind the scenes as far as the people are taking for future dates, um, divergence in the chart. Nobody is pricing in the top of Bit uh, Dogecoin right now. Nobody is, uh, is pricing in the fact that it, 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 I mean, nobody's pricing in that they believe that the coin is going to go down in the near future or go back to six cents or something like that. It's just simply not being priced in. They're positioning themselves for more. And, you know, when you look at this and you say, yeah, you can't always follow uh, institutions and, which is, is true. Nobody does. Nobody's shooting 100% out here. But 
they don't nobody loses money on purpose right so if you're betting for something to go up and institutions can certainly sway the market control the market they believe that there is money uh to be made so i'm going back to this video sorry i know i've been jumping around so um so if, and then kind of the, uh, the double down on that is saying that when you have like an individual catalyst like we're saying that uh, doge um, had that and Doge and uh, Sheep, for example, had that divergence, but they were it was to the upside. The momentum is carried there because we have a larger sector of retail holders that are going to come in and they're going to buy at some of those lower levels, like especially around like 15. So you can have some of that overshoot and having an individual catalyst like X uh, will dramatically affect the price of, of, of a Dogecoin. So we can go back even further here and I can prove that individual catalysts play a big part in coins and it may not necessarily trickle over to another one. So a Bitcoin having is obviously going to play a big role here. But we have this spike here where we went from seven cent. Um, was this November? No, that's not the spike. This is the spike. I thought that spike looked a little small. This is the spike here, right? We went from six cent to around 16, 17 cent, right? What is this candle here? This is the Elon purchasing Twitter candle, right? Um, around a hundred and forty percent increase, right? So we we had obviously uh, traders, swing traders, shorts, all that kind of stuff jump in here, but this was an individual catalyst. Does not pertain to Bitcoin. Does not pertain to Ethereum. But an individual catalyst can pump a coin and cause divergence, and have it be a lot stronger than. Um, the the other coin. So you can't always say that, okay, it should be directly related. So this is, what is this? Uh, October, let's say 28th through November 1st, right? For Doge. So you see this big pump here, right? Uh, over 100% increase. So let's go take a look at Bitcoin and see if Bitcoin, this was 2023, um see if bitcoin had a reason okay uh to do that october oh what do you know look at this here bitcoin was flatlining here uh between this time here so okay, let's go ahead and zoom in so no major pumps here at all had one you know this was after the conclusion here so this is on the fourth. So this is even after um, the trade sell because it, we uh, is Dogecoin started selling off like the first or the second. So the twenty eighth through the first, which was that big pump for Dogecoin, Bitcoin was having red days and not moving at all. Like we had a, a, some very slight movement here, maybe a few hundred bucks on the day, while Dogecoin was up over a hundred percent. So. Why did this not affect Bitcoin? Because it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's, there's no crossover there. It's not a Bitcoin catalyst. So I hope that makes sense um, for the people that are uh, comparing Doge to BTC and saying, hey, BTC is running out. BT, historically, B Bitcoin is supposed to be the front runner for crypto. This is how it's supposed to go. What we're seeing right now is, is an anomaly. It's abnormal. We are typically Bitcoin is supposed to run first. After the having, not set a new, not that not set an all-time high prior to the having, Bitcoin runs first, and then you have altcoins and stuff like that, and then memes. And like it, it's typically how that would go if you're looking at the historics here. What we have right now is a, a big divergence based off of what we've seen historically, where everything ran early. And um, and now we're we're technically just getting to the meat of the bull run, and we're all looking like, okay, what does this mean now? How strong is this move going to be? Are we going to have a shorter bull market? Is it not going to be the 18 months because we ran early? Or is it going to be the full 18 months and we're just going to blow off the charts? So these are all things that are uh, topics to be discussed here. But historically, we have 18 months and uh, every, everything is running early. That's why I said in that post that, you know, Doge being up still over 100 percent from its bottom prior to the having holding it before uh, Bitcoin is even running is you know just consider that a blessing based off of history so I, I think that is kind of something we should kind of consider here and uh rule that in with patience that this isn't a overnight thing and but the gains are still far better than getting you know at seven eight percent 
eight to 10% uh, in the stock market, right? On an annual basis, when you have something that went up 130% in a month, or in, in, in the first quarter of the year, right? So we have expectations for this bull run. And until we get some divergence here, whether that be in the uh, options market and what we see as far as for like short data, what we see, uh, or if we see a divergence in uh, capital allocation of funds, something like that, until that happens, then the bull run is still on and we are just getting started. So with that said, uh, with that being said, I hope that provides some insight here as far as the patience, the cycle of Doge and what to expect going forward. Um, I know this is a little different from the video I had planned, but I think it's better, right? We improvised and we went in there. We really got to uh, some to, to discuss some topics here that I believe are important and relevant for uh, for holders right now. So if you can, if you have not, but if you found value in this video, please consider subscribing. I'm going to try and do provide enough value so that we can get to 100,000 subscribers before Bitcoin gets to 100,000. So yes, I do believe Bitcoin is going into uh, six figures, well over 100,000 this bull run. But I'll say that for another video. But if you can help with that, I'll pre greatly appreciate it. Leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video.